Welcome into the video. I am your tech guy Wayne and today I'll be going over how to use the Nokia G300 for beginners. And I do want to give a disclaimer that uh, a lot of the tips I'm going to show in this video are going to apply to most of the other Nokia phones too. So if you don't quite have the G300 but you have a, a similar version, this video will probably still apply to you. So I would say watch till the end and pick up as many nuggets as you can, okay? So this is going to be a beginner video and I'm going to walk you through all the things you'll need to know to learn how to use this phone. Starting with just a, a tour of the phone. So we'll go over all the exterior buttons, how to navigate the home screen, how to find all the important things you'll need to be using. From there, we'll go over how to download apps and where to find your apps, how to organize them. Then we'll go over how to set up your email on the phone, how to use email on your phone. From there, we'll then go through a quick walkthrough of how to use the camera. And we'll also sprinkle in how to make the text larger for you so you can see things to see the words better if you need to do that. And we'll end the video with how to control the volume on the phone. So that's kind of a rundown of what we'll cover in the video. So make sure you watch till the end so you don't miss any important information. And if at any point in the video you find it helpful, you learn something new, make sure you stop and bump that like button, all right? Let's go ahead and jump into the video. So on the left side of the phone, you will find your uh, SIM tray. This is where the SIM card for the phone is gonna sit. There's also a slot to expand the storage using a micro SD card one of these little guys here. So some of you guys might have had a car from an older phone. You'll put it in on this side using uh, what is called a SIM tool, it looks like this. If you have a paper clip, it also works the same way too. So just FYI. Um, and then we also have this special button here that basically will launch your assistant. So watch, I'm just gonna tap it once here. It launches the Google Assistant, and then you can tap the mic to ask it um, a command. We'll go over this more later, but I just wanna point out that you have this button on the left side to launch your Google Assistant. Now on the right side of the phone, you will find your volume up, volume down, and your power button. Now, this power button will also uh, act as a fingerprint reader. You can program your fingerprint so that when you put your finger on the button here, it'll unlock the phone um, using your fingerprint. So I'll uh, go over later how to set up the fingerprint so you can use that. It's a great way to secure your phone so that no one can just pick up your phone and start using it. They would need to have your fingerprint or your passcode. So we'll go over that more later, but um, for the power button, Simply pressing it will uh, wake up the phone and know that smartphones have two functions. So there's a sleep mode and then there's actually the off mode. So when I press the power button like this, it's putting the phone asleep, but the phone is not off because I can simply just tap it again and it wakes the phone up. But if I hold down on the power button, then that does something different. So let me unlock the phone first and just show you if I hold down the power button, it's gonna take me to this menu here that will allow me to actually power the phone off pressing the power off button here. It also gives me an option for a restart in the upper right corner. So just know there are two different functions. Most people keep their phone all the, on all the time, but what they do is their phone will just simply go to sleep and then when they're ready to use it, they either just tap the screen or they tap the power button and that will wake up the phone, okay? Now, once you're ready to get into the phone, Take your finger, you're gonna put it on the screen and you're gonna drag your finger up the screen. Keyword is drag. If you drag your finger up the screen, that's how you unlock it. So power button to wake it up, put your finger on the screen and just drag it up and that's how you unlock the phone, okay? Now before I get into the phone, I wanna show you just one more thing. So um, at the bottom of the phone, you will find your charging port now this phone uses what is called a type C charging type. So if you ever needed to buy a new charging cable, you'd have to look for a type C charging cable. So type C there, you have a headphone jack to the left right here, and that's all you'll find at the bottom of the phone. On the top of the phone, there's nothing there, so we're good. Okay, so we're ready to wake up the phone. I'm gonna press my power button, put my finger on the screen, and I'm gonna just drag my finger up the screen, that's how you unlock the phone. And now we are on what is called the home screen. Now, on the home screen, you're gonna find three buttons at the bottom of the screen. And these are the primary buttons you'll use to navigate the phone. You have a home button in the middle. You have a back button to the left. 
And on the right, you have what is called a recent apps button. Let me give you a quick rundown of what each button does. So the home button, simply put, takes you back to the home screen. So if I tap on any one of these little icons here, they're gonna take me into what is called an app or application. Think of it like a, how computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. So whenever I reference apps, I'm referring to these little icons that are on the home screen, okay? So if I tap on one of these apps, let's say I tap on this app here, which is the phone app, and now I, because I wanna make a phone call, guess what, I'm in the phone app. If I wanna get back to the home screen, I'm gonna tap on the home button at the bottom of the screen. And just that easy, we're right back to the home screen. If I go to here, which is called the Chrome browser or your web browser, maybe I wanna go on the internet and I want to search for something, right? You know, you can go to uh, AOL, Facebook, uh, Amazon, any website you think of, all obviously you get there through the web browser. But when you're all done, and you wanna get back to the home screen, you're simply gonna tap on the home button and just that easy, it takes you back to the home screen. So that's what the home button does. Now next we have to the left, we have what is called the back button. This button, simply put, takes you back one step. Here's a great example of how this works. I'm gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna drag it down the screen. Remember when I say drag, you know, I'm using very specific language because you put your finger on the screen and you just drag it down, and that's how you bring up this menu here. So let me show you one more time. Finger at the top of the screen, drag it down the screen to bring up this menu. I'm gonna drag it down again, and now we'll have our shortcut to our settings wheel, and this takes you to the settings menu on the phone, okay? So I'm in the settings. I'm gonna select a few things. So I'm gonna go to system, I'm gonna to go to um, gestures. So I've just selected a few things within this app and I've gone deeper into the menu. I wanna go back one page. To do that, I can tap on this back arrow in the upper left corner, which is way up here, or I can simply tap my back button right here. This will take me back one page. And guess what, I can tap it again, take me back another page. And you can keep hitting this button until it takes you all the way out of that application. So that's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step. And it will keep taking you back one step until there's no more uh, places to go. And in which case, it'll take you out of the app and back to the home screen. All right. Now, to the right, we have what is called the recent apps button. Maybe you were in the phone app and you want to get back to it. You can tap on the phone app here, or I can tap recent apps, and I can swipe over, swipe over again, and I can tap it here. So it's just another way to get back to an app that you were previously using. It's also a way to look at all the apps you've used recently, and you know you want to get back to them to continue what you were doing, or Maybe you say, I'm all done with my web browser and I want to close out this program. I'm simply going to swipe up and that's going to completely take me, uh, or it's going to close out the browser so it's no longer running in the background of the phone. And I can swipe up on all these apps to close everything that's running in the background of the phone. This is a great way to help um, to keep your phone running nice and smooth is closing out um, apps once you're, once you're finished using them. OK, so that's our quick rundown of our home screen. And these are the, again, three buttons you'll use to navigate the entire screen. Now, I did want to show you as well. This is the main home screen, but I can swipe uh, left and there's more pages where I can add more apps. Right. I can also swipe right. OK, so you can swipe left and right and there are different pages on the home screen. Now, if, if I'm on the main home screen here and I swipe to the right, it will take me to a Google page. And this is a great page to use to keep track of different things. Um, the weather, um, different uh, articles. As you begin to search for things, the phone is gonna learn the things that you like to search for and it will recommend 
um, additional news that is in that same category. So sports here and political stuff. And as I, as I scroll up, I can see even more stories and uh, articles that are being recommended. So this is a great place to find just the latest news and things that are happening in the world based on the things that you search. Now at the top of the screen, you will find a search box and you can simply tap in this box and you can then search for more things. You can also tap on this little um, microphone and you can just say what you want to search for. NBA playoffs. The Mavericks will face the Timberwolves today at 5.30 p.m. So just that easy, I want to know, hey, who's playing in the playoffs right now? And they're telling me this is the game that's going to happen today. So that's just one way, one of many ways to use the Google page you'll find on the home screen. I'm going to hit the home button to get back to the main screen. So far, if you learned anything and this has been helpful, make sure you bump that like button. Let's move on to the next section. We're going to go over what is called your notification panel. Now, earlier I briefly showed you starting at the top of the screen and dragging down. This will take you to what is called the notification panel. And this is a section of the phone where you have two important things. And sorry, the phone is having a little trouble focusing in. So you'll have at the top here, these are called switches. And these switches are basically shortcuts to some of the most important settings you'll find on the phone. So your Wi-Fi switch, Bluetooth, um, do not disturb, your flashlight, auto rotation, power saving mode. These are all just some of the shortcuts that you'll find on the screen. Uh, and then here you'll find these are some other games and different things that you can play that are within the phone. And then right below this, um, if you have, for example, a new email or a new text message or a Facebook notification, they will all show up in this menu here. So frequently, you might get a notification on your phone. If you want to check that notification, you swipe down. And that's where you'll see, oh, Facebook sent me a message or I got an email. And then you can select that option when you see it. and It'll take you into that app to see more about that notification. Right now, I don't have a lot of notifications that are in here, but this is where they'll fill up as you begin to sign into your different accounts. Now, one cool trick is when you swipe down once, this is the menu you'll see. If we swipe down again, um, you'll have some other options. So for example, this is a brightness bar where you can make the phone dimmer or brighter depending on what works best for your eyes. And then in this menu here, I can swipe left to get to some other options here. Airplane mode, screen recording, screenshot, things like that. Sorry about the, the screen kind of flickering and blurring. Um, we'll be off this section soon and it'll stop doing that. Now, one more thing I want to show you that's important in that menu is some of you are probably saying, yeah, how do I connect to Wi-Fi, my home Wi-Fi network? Well, we'll swipe down. The first option you'll see is the Wi-Fi switch. So I'm going to take my finger and I want to hold down on that Wi-Fi switch for one second. That'll take me to the Wi-Fi menu. And here, first I want to make sure my Wi-Fi is turned on. So like this, it's off. And now it's on, so that's our little on-off switch. And then here, it'll show us a list of all of the available Wi-Fi networks. And so you'll want to look for the network for your home. And let's say if it's uh, Netgear 52, I would tap on there. And then I would want to enter the password uh, for that network. So maybe it's, you know, 6749, whatever. You type in that password, hit the check and then it's gonna to connect to that network for you. So just that is, you can connect to Wi-Fi. And if you're out at a coffee shop or you're at a friend's house, all you need to do is ask, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password and what's the name of the network? And then you can go to this menu and connect for yourself. Now, same goes for a Bluetooth device, a Bluetooth speaker, or a Bluetooth headphone. You can hold down on this Bluetooth icon here, tap on pair new device, and then it will show you all the available Bluetooth devices for you to be able to connect to them. All right. So that's a quick rundown of the notification panel and some of the important things that you'll find in that menu. 
Okay, in our next section, we're going to go over how to download applications. Now, just one more quick rundown of this. So computers have programs, phones have applications, or apps for short. And you'll find the apps in what is called the Play Store. It's this little play icon you'll find on the home screen. We're going to tap on the Play Store icon. And this is where you would download apps. Now, some of you, when you tapped on that play button, it didn't take you to this screen. For some of you, it might have taken you to a screen that says you need to sign in to a Google account first. If that's what you see on your screen, no problem. In the bottom left corner, you should see a button that says, uh, or you, so you have two options. You'll either sign into your Google account because you already have one. If you don't have one, there should be a button at the bottom left corner of the screen that'll say create account or create. And that is where you can create a free Gmail account that just takes a couple of minutes and then it will give you access to the Play Store. You do have to have a, a, a Google account or a Gmail account in order to use the Play Store and download apps. There is no way around it. Okay, so here is the easiest way to search for an app that you want to download. Let's say you want to download the, a, a good solitaire app because you like to play solitaire. You can tap in the search box at the top of the screen here, tap in the box, and when you tap in the box, a keyboard will pop up and you can type in solitaire. Or you can tap on the microphone in the upper right corner, and when you tap that, you can just say solitaire, just like this. Solitaire. Just that easy. It'll take your voice command, it'll do a search for you, and then it'll recommend solitaire games, and there's so many to choose from. So, how do I choose a great game? Well, you can tap on each one of these, and some of them will have a video that you can watch, and some will just have pictures. You can kind of see this is what the app looks like. Um, also, look at how many downloads the app has. This one has 100 million. So it's safe to say that that's a good option because it has so many downloads. But if it only has like a thousand downloads or like, you know, 50,000 downloads, that's considered low. So always pick one that has a high download number. And also uh, this install button, this is telling you that the app is free. Okay, this blue button, if the app is free, it'll just say install. If the app is not free, instead of saying install, it'll have a price in this box. So keep that in mind, not all apps are free. Some of them do cost, and um, it's up to you if you wanna get a paid version or a free version. Sometimes the free versions have a lot of ads and that can be frustrating. So in that case, there's times where I will look for a paid version that doesn't have ads, because I don't wanna have ads pop up every few minutes. That's up to you and up to your budget. Now, let's say I like this one and I wanna download it. I'm gonna tap on this blue install button and you'll see this begin to spin. When this pops up, just say not now. And you'll see that the app is now in the process of downloading to the phone. This one should download fairly quickly. When it's finished, this play button is going to light up and allow me to press it. Right now, I can't press it because that's telling me the app has not downloaded yet. So just be patient, wait till it fully downloads. When it's finished, you'll see, again, that button is gonna change. And keep in mind, the app has to download and then it has to install, so it's a two-step process. So, anyway, once it's done, you'll hit the play button and that will allow us to go right into the app. And just that easy, there it is, hit play, and it will take us right into the solitaire game. All right, it's asking me to hit accept just to get into it. Now, I'm not gonna go any further into the app, but that is the process of how to download an app. Now, one of the things you might notice is, well, hey, what if I wanna get out of this app? I don't see my home button. How do I get out of this? Every now and then, you'll have an app that is in what's called full screen mode, and in full screen mode, it hides the buttons that you would normally see at the bottom. All you'll need to do is, at the bottom where it says Nokia, just swipe up, and the buttons will pop up briefly. So swipe up, there you go. And once you swipe up, just tap that home button and it'll take you back to the home screen. 
So just that easy, you can get out of that full screen to make those buttons show up by just swiping up from the bottom of the screen. Now, you'll find some of your apps are gonna be on this home screen, but not all the apps. Where are all my apps stored? Well, if you simply swipe up from on the home screen, swipe up like this, it'll take you to what is called the app drawer. And this is where all of the apps on the phone are stored. So you'll find quite a few. Here's the new solitaire game we just downloaded. And I can also get to that app by going to it in the app drawer. Okay, once again, swipe up from the top or from the bottom, excuse me, hit the home button. So I wanna show you that one more time in case you missed it. We're on the home screen and I wanna to get to all the apps on the phone. I'm gonna swipe up and swiping up is the same as dragging up. Putting your finger on the screen and just dragging up the screen, that takes you to the app drawer to find all your apps. All right, if you haven't hit that like button yet, take a minute and bump that like because I know you've learned something in this video already. Okay. Let's transition now into how to sign into your email, okay? Now, if you already signed into your Gmail account, you might be good to go, but some of you may have multiple email accounts, and so here are the steps to sign into more than one account. You'll have this folder on the main screen. It says Google. You'll tap on this folder to see all the apps that are in the folder. We're gonna tap on Gmail. And from here, it already has me signed into one account already. You know, now if I want to sign into multiple accounts, I would need to go to the top of the screen, to the right, and you'll find a little icon in the right corner. If you tap on that icon, it'll take you to this menu. And from here, you'll go down to add another account. This will take you to the setup email page. Now, best kept secret, you can sign into non-Gmail accounts in the Gmail app. That's right. I can sign into my Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, Exchange, or Office 360. I can sign into all these different email types, and I can check these emails using the Gmail app. You just have to select the right prompt. So if you had Yahoo, for example, you would tap on Yahoo, and all you would need is your Yahoo email address and your password um, to proceed. Now, some of you may have other email accounts that you don't see on this list. A good example is AOL or sbcglobal.net. So let me show you a little trick on how to sign into those email accounts since you don't see them on the list here. Let's hit our home button. We're gonna go to the Play Store and we wanna get uh, off this screen. We're just gonna hit the back button to go back one page. And let's hit it again. Now, we're gonna tap on the search apps and games box up here. The keyboard is gonna pop up. Now, here's what you'll need to do. Tap on the numbers in the bottom left corner where it says question mark one, two, three. And hit the at symbol. So whatever your email account is, if it's at AOL.com, you're gonna type in at, and then tap on the ABC to get back to the letters. And then I'm gonna just tap AOL. This is the erase button right here if you make a mistake. Just type in at AOL and then hit this magnifying glass to do a search. And this will recommend apps that work with at AOL email accounts. You can repeat this for any other email type you have at sbcglobal.net, at verizon.net. You can simply just type in the at and the provider, and then it will recommend apps that will work with it. So in this case, I can just simply download the AOL app. I'm gonna tap the install button right next to this one. Give it a couple of seconds. And it's gonna download the AOL app, so then I can sign into my AOL account using that app. So this is a really easy workaround for you to be able to sign into those accounts that you don't see on the main Gmail page. Now, 
Uh, obviously, it's downloading and installing. That'll take a few seconds. So I'm going to hit the home button, go back to my main screen, and just that fast, our AOL app is downloaded. I can now open it up, and then I can sign into my AOL email account. All right. Now, this one doesn't prompt you right away. So uh, in this case, you would go to the upper left corner and tap on this little uh, profile icon. And then here, you should go to Manage Accounts. And then it should give you an option, here we go, to sign in to your AOL email address. Okay. Let's hit our home button. Next, let's go over how to set up your fingerprint sensor so you can unlock your phone using your power button. And we'll also go over how to set a password for the phone as well. Now, let's see if you remember how to get to the settings. You swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, tap on the settings wheel that you'll find right here. And you'll need to swipe up and go to security. And from here, where it says uh, screen lock, tap on screen lock, change it to a pin or pattern. This way we can program a four-digit code you'd have to enter to unlock the phone. Let's make it one, two, three, four. I'm just making that for the simplicity of the video. You should make yours a harder number. One, two, three, four, confirm. So now, if you want to get into the phone, you do need to put in that code before you do anything. So watch this. I'm going to press the power button. Okay, now I'm going to press it again. The phone is awake. If I try to swipe up, it will prompt me to put in that code before I can get into the phone. So one, two, three, four. Hit the arrow. And now it lets me into the phone. So that's how you set a passcode for the phone. And once you have a passcode, then you can set up things like a fingerprint. So tap on fingerprint. It'll ask for that code again. And we'll tap add fingerprint. Next, start. And then we need to start basically pressing our, our thumb or any other finger you want. It's up to you what finger you want, but the thumb makes the most sense. So you'll just take your thumb and just place it on top of the uh, power button right here. That's all I'm doing. And I'm trying to slightly move my thumb each time so it can learn my fingerprint. And this will make it easier to unlock the phone when the time comes. You just lift, put it back, and you try to move it each time. And we're almost done here. It usually takes less than a minute. Now you can always program multiple fingerprints too. I always recommend program a fingerprint on, on each finger or on each hand. So if you have like grease or something on one hand, you can use your other hand to unlock the phone. We're going to hit done. And now, if I put the phone asleep and wake it up, it's asking for a passcode, but I can just take my thumb and unlock it that way. So that is how you set up your fingerprint sensor to unlock the phone with your finger. Now, next, let's move into how to take pictures. We're gonna go over how to use the camera. So at the bottom of the screen, you will find a camera button right here. And the first thing we'll ask you is giving your camera permission to access device storage. Or actually, this one is location. So this one is up to you if you want the camera to access your location. Uh, I'm going to hit while using the app. Now, our camera is up and open. And you'll see you have this button in the center here to snap pictures. Now, if you want to take a video, right next to the photo, it says video. You'll tap on video, and the button changes to a little red dot. And tapping that will start recording the video, and this will count down or count up. So it'll show you that your video is recording. Record, record, record. Pressing this button will let you take pictures while it's recording the video. And when you're done, simply hit that button in the center to stop the video. Now, once you take a picture or video, you'll have a button to the right here to, to review that picture or video you just took. So let's tap on that icon. And now I can play back the video that we just took. See. 
and let's hit the back button here. Those are the main things you need to know about taking pictures. It's essentially pictures and video. You can also swipe across the screen to go back and forth. So if you want to go to photo, you can swipe this way. You also have a portrait in a night mode. If you want to flip the camera to go the other way, you'll tap on this button here and that'll flip to the front camera. So front camera, press it again. Now it's the rear camera. All right, let's hit our home button. So let's say you've taken all these pictures and now you want to go back and look at all these pictures. So to do that, you'll want to go to the Google Photos app, which you'll find in the bottom right corner. This will show you um, all, the, all of the photos that you've taken on the phone. Um, it'll prompt you to do an update as soon as you open the app. So make sure you update it so you have the latest version. Google Photos is a really cool app. It also has a special backup feature as well. And you can set it so that it'll back up all your photos to the cloud. So if you ever lose your phone, your photos will always be saved in the cloud. You'll simply need to go to photos.google.com, sign into your Google account, and that will allow you to look at all the pictures that you've taken using your phone. But you do need to turn on this backup feature when you first open the app. So here the app is open. Um, so here it's asking, do you want your photos to automatically, uh, this is something different. So I'm going to turn this off. Now, if you want to turn on the backup function, you'll need to go to the upper right corner, tap on your profile icon. And from here, you'll go to turn on backup. See backup is off. I'm going to turn it on. And now it's going to start backing up every photo that I take on the phone. So I never have to worry about losing them if my phone gets lost or damaged. Now let's go back. And here we can see these are the pictures that we took today. And it's super easy to swipe through and look at all the photos that we just took. Okay. That's a quick rundown of where to find the photos after you take the pictures. Next, we're going to go over how to change the text size, if you want to make the words a bit bigger so it's easier to read, we're going to do that now. Now we already have the settings open, so we can use our recent apps button here, tap on that, and I can go right to my settings from here. Great example of when you would use the recent apps button. And I need to get out of the security section because that's not the right section to control the size of the text so let's hit our back button and now that we're on the main screen we're going to go to display and then from here we'll want to go down to font size now let me show you what i did because i did that kind of fast display tap on advanced and then we're going to go to font size and here we can move this little toggle over one to make the words bigger. And then I can move it one more time to make the words even larger. So that's one way to make the words bigger. I'm gonna hit my back button. And then there's also a display size, which is another option. And dragging this over will make the text bigger. And you can keep going until you find a comfortable size for the text, okay? If I hit the home button, you'll notice all of my uh, app names are bigger and everywhere I go, the text is going to be larger now. So that's how you make the text larger. Now, the very last thing I want to cover is how to change the volume on the phone. Now to do this, you need to tap on the volume up button, volume up or down to get to this menu. So volume up, you'll see this pop up that will show up. Now it leaves quickly, it only stays for two seconds. So I'm gonna have to press it multiple times as I explain this, so just stay with me. So volume, and if you tap on this icon, this is what changes the setting of the phone. So let's start with here. This is all the volume is up, vibrate mode, sound totally off, and then back to all the sound on. So that's how you toggle through, put your phone on vibrate. It's on vibrate, press it again, it's on silent, and now all the volume is back up. 
So that's one of the things you need to know. Now down here, there's another button. This will show you all of the other volumes that are on the phone. Let me show you that one more time. Volume up, tap on the, the bottom button. This is how you control the individual volume for these four categories. So media volume has to do with you listening to music or watching a video. This is how you specifically control that sound. You're on a call and you want to, it's too loud. You want to lower the volume of the call, you'll lower call volume. You want to raise the volume of your ringer when the phone rings or when someone sends you a text message, you would raise this bar here. And then you have your alarm volume, which is the last one. So these are four different settings you can control. And these are the, the main four things that will make sound for your phone. You'll just tap that button to get to this menu and then control them accordingly. All right. And that brings us to the end of our video. Again, if this was helpful, make sure you bump that like button down below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know if the video was helpful for you and specifically what section was the most helpful for you. Always love hearing your feedback and um, we want to continue to make these videos and so we always gauge the comments to know if the video is helpful, should we continue to make them? And also, if there's any follow-up videos you'd like to see on this phone, let me know and I'll try to put some together for you, okay? Thanks again for watching. Take care and as always, have a good one.